Hello friends, I'm Jessica and today we're here to do my wrap up for the months of July and August. I originally did some stats for this but I read two books in August that are not in my stats because I had originally planned to do a wrap up at the end of July but seeing as how I didn't do that. Um, my stats for July were that I read nine books uh, which was 3,152 pages and there were one three star, seven four stars, and one five star. Now I read two books in August so it makes it to 11 books and one of them was, a f I think both of those were both four stars as well. So it was good quality reading for the most part. The quantity was kind of an issue for me. Not to say that reading 11 books in two months isn't a great number. I know a lot of people that don't read that many. I just typically have been reading more than that and just didn't. Short version of that is check out the video in the description box below as well as in the cards as to why I didn't film anything in August. As usual we're gonna go from lowest rated to highest rated and if you have any questions about anything please ask me in the comments below. Also all of my links for my full reviews on Goodreads are in the description box below as well and on there I do breakdowns of how I get my rating as far as um, cover, character, plot, writing style, enjoyment, etc. is all broke down in my Goodreads reviews if you would like to know how something ended up where it ended up at on my rating scale. So the first book is The Empress by S.J. Kincaid. This is the second book in the Diabolic series. I give this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. The first book in this series follows Nemesis who is basically a copy of her human master and she takes her human master's place so that her human master doesn't die in this process that is explained better in that book. It's a sci-fi world set in our universe and there is no non-earthen life forms in existence. So there's no aliens but they're spread out throughout the galaxy. I did really enjoy this but there were a couple of things that just kept me from absolutely loving this book. I think one of my favorite things about the first book was that there were a lot of twists and turns and as far as who you could trust and um, who Nemesis could trust there really wasn't a lot of people that you could trust and it just kind of flipped who was on her side who wasn't flipped a lot but it was just enough to not make you crazy whereas this book there was like no one that Nemesis could trust. It was like every five pages someone was turning on her, someone was doing you know something bad to her, something awful was happening. It was just one thing after another after another after another. There really wasn't ever any relief from bad things happening to Nemesis and it just became kind of redundant over time and just not as fun to read uh, because there was no winning for Nemesis. It was just loss after loss after loss. Overall though I am really enjoying the series. I do plan to read the third and I think final book um, when it comes out. There was a huge cliffhanger at the end of this so I'm really interested to see what happens next. The next book is Throne of Glass by Sarah J Mass. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. You all know what this is about. It's about an assassin named Selena who following a year in captivity is sent to the kingdom so that she can fight for the honor of being the king's assassin and essentially once she serves out that servitude she will then be released and pardoned of her prison sentence originally. And oh yeah there's a love triangle. I enjoyed the writing and the world building, a lot of things in this. Um, what kept this from being a five star book for me was just that because it is more of like a setup book I felt that the pacing was kind of lacking and also the plot wasn't as heavy as I would like it to be but still a really solid beginning entry into a series that I think I'm really going to enjoy. Next is an arc that I read and that is The Babysitter's Coven by Kate Williams. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book follows a girl named Esme who is a babysitter and has kind of a babysitter's club and a new girl moves to town and finds Esme and basically says you know my mom told me that I need to find the babysitters. These two girls together learn that they have magical powers and they have a very Buffy the Vampire Slayer situation going on and essentially they learn that all of their connections could either save or destroy the world. I had such high hopes for this book and it really just didn't hit all of the marks that I wanted it to hit. I did really enjoy it. I like the setting. I like the characters a lot. I love the cover but for me it was the plot that I had issues with and also I mean I liked the characters but there was also a few flaws in that as well. The narrative itself compares the setup to Buffy the Vampire Slayer a lot 
and in my opinion it is too heavy-handed in that comparison mainly due to the fact that it does follow Buffy the Vampire Slayer very closely. You can clearly see what characters in this book are characters from Buffy and because you can see that you can kind of tell what choices they're going to make later on in the book so there's not really a whole lot of surprises in that. It's, it's very um, too heavily foreshadowed in my opinion if you're familiar with Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now if you're not familiar with Buffy then it may be more interesting for you but I think part of something involving Buffy is that you enjoy it because it involves Buffy but it was just too much in my opinion. But I do plan to continue the series. Um, I believe that they said the next book is coming out in 2020 so I definitely will check that out. And the next book is Want and Future by Amy Rose Capetta and Corey McCarthy. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Ari who finds out that she is the 42nd, 43rd, 40 something reincarnation of King Arthur and essentially she has to learn what that means for her and for her life and for her friends. This is set in the galaxy in the future of our own world but in the future and it basically follows Ari and the knights of her round table and how they plan to defeat the monopoly loving evil government society and order to set things straight in the world and much like the original Arthurian tale it hinges a lot on Ari's heart. I liked the first 75% of this book but the last quarter took a really weird turn that I'm not sure how I feel about. Much like others who read and reviewed this book I felt like there was something missing but I don't know what that missing thing was. There was just something in this that was something not in this that kept me from absolutely loving it and I don't know what it was but I think it had something to do with that last 25%. However there is a sequel coming up and it is set kind of in a weird setting so I'm interested to see how that turns around what's happening at the end of this book and how I feel about that. Next is Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. I gave this a four out of five stars. This follows a group of seven misfits who basically have to beat the odds and save the world. Our main character Ari is someone who is from a futuristic setting of our time, not super future but a little futuristic of our time and she is cryogenically frozen and put on a spaceship and is sent out into space and is supposed to have like a two-month voyage I believe to this other planet where she's going to live and something happens to her spaceship and she ends up being found 200 years in the future and basically everyone and everything that she knows is gone and so it sets Ari in with these other characters and they have to figure out how to save the world from an evil galactic war and it's a bunch of misfits and it's just a really fun story. I liked the writing and I liked the plot and I liked the characters. I think I liked this a lot more than other people who read it. It's very campy. It's very Guardians of the Galaxy. If you're looking for serious sci-fi this is not going to work for you at all. It's campy. It's fun. It's an enjoyable read and I did like it. I had a few issues with the pacing but overall I really enjoyed the plot and I really loved that villain reveal at the end. Next was The Winter Sister by Megan Collins. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This book follows the main character Sylvie who in the past when she was a young girl her sister went out on a date with her boyfriend and was found murdered and in the future Sylvie has to return home to take care of their ailing mother. I've never figured out who killed Sylvie or how she died and so there's a lot of drama and trauma in that at her mother's health facility. The sister's old boyfriend who Sylvie believes killed her is the one that's taking care of the mother and it's a whole Thing. I enjoyed Megan's writing style and I enjoyed my time reading this book which is weird to say because it's like a mystery thriller but I still liked it. Um, one thing I will say about this I am newer to thriller mystery type novels so if you are kind of a connoisseur of that genre you may not enjoy this as much as I did but for someone who is newer to the genre I really enjoyed it. I like the character growth of Sylvie. I will say that the, a lot of things that happened were predictable but they weren't predictable so for Sylvie and it added to her character growth which I really enjoyed about that aspect of it. Next I have the Witch Graphic Novels volumes 5 and 6 and I gave these both 4.25 out of 5 stars. I am loving the series. They're super fun to read. I'm enjoying them. They have great artwork, great storyline, great plot. Love that it's different from the original cartoon that I've seen. I guess the cartoon is not the original graphic novels or the original cartoon. It's just what I originally seen so in my brain it's the original and this is but you know what I mean. And then we have The Red Scrolls of Magic by Cassie Clare and Wesley Chu. This is the first book in The Eldest Curses and I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I have a lot of words here so I'm just going to read from my notes. This book takes place between books 3 and 4 of The Mortal Instruments and follows our lovable couple Magnus and Alec. So I guess if you haven't read up to book 3 in The Mortal Instruments that was a spoiler. 
We follow Malik as they roam Europe following a human cult that Magnus may or may not have started hundreds of years ago. They were harmless at first, but now they've taken to murder and it's Magnus's job to stop them. This is also the first test of Malik's relationship and a fun ride for all of us fans. I am complete and utter trash for Malik and I think if you are a Malik fan you will love this. If you're just a casual fan of the series or you don't enjoy Malik, you probably won't enjoy this as much as I did, but if you are Malik trash like I am, then you you'll love it. For diehard fans, this is a must. Um, there's actually a scene in here where Helen Blackthorne is talking about her brothers and sisters and what she hopes for them in the future. And if you've read The Dark Artifices, you kind of know how that goes. It's a very heartfelt and hurtful passage that kind of destroyed me a little bit. Highly recommend. And the last two books that I have are Demon Class and Spellbound by Rachel Hawkins. These are books two and three in the Hex Hall series. And again, I'm just going to read from my notes because there's a lot of notes. So this series follows Sophie, who's a witch with a habit of casting spells that go way wrong. Sophie gets sentenced to spend the rest of her high school years at Hecate, a reform school for Prodigium, which are basically witches, werewolves, shapeshifters, warlocks, fairies, and yes, even one vampire. At Hex Hall, Sophie discovers not only one ridiculously handsome boy, but also a coven of witches who want to bring her into their fold. When members of the coven start showing up nearly dead, Sophie must figure out what is happening to them before it happens to her as well. I won't say much because sequel, but damn. I loved both of these books. I truly enjoyed the series. It was a lot of fun. It took me back to high school. There was a lot of drama. The final battle crushed my soul. It was amazing. I loved it. This is overall just a really great series. I highly recommend it. Uh, my actual ratings were 4.25 for book two and 4.5 for book three. So highly recommend. So those are the 11 books that I read during July and August. If you would like to discuss any of the books that I read, please hit me up in the comment section below because I would love to chat with you. That's why we're here. I post reading, writing, and book related videos basically just whenever I have a chance in the month of September. So if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you subscribe. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!